This video contains the solutions to take-home problems number 29. So for each of these, we're looking for horizontal or oblique asymptotes. And the process here is to take this rational function and divide top and bottom by the highest power of x that we see in the bottom of the fraction. So in this case, we have x minus 8. And if we think of x as x to the first, we're going to divide top and bottom by x to the first. So in other words, we're going to take 2x plus 1, divide it by x minus 8, and divide top and bottom by x. When we do that, we're going to get a bunch of small fractions. We're going to get 2x over x plus 1 over x divided by x over x minus 8 over x. And now we simplify as many of those fractions as we can. 2x divided by x, that's just x, because these x's divide out. 1 over x, there's nothing we can do with that, so we just leave it as 1 over x. And then in the bottom, x over x, that's just 1. And then 8 over x, we have to leave as 8 over x. Now, as x goes to infinity, as x goes to plus or minus infinity, 1 over x is going to go to 0. Imagine that x is a billion. 1 divided by a billion is a very, very, sm very small number. And 8 over x is also going to go to 0, because again, if x is a billion, 8 divided by a billion is still a really, really, really small number. So in the end behavior, this is going to look very much like 2 plus 0 divided by 1 minus 0, which is 2. And that tells us that our horizontal asymptotes that we have a horizontal asymptote, and that is y equals 2. And that means that if we were going to graph this rational function, on the ends, as x gets bigger and bigger, either in the positive or negative direction, this function is going to look very much like the horizontal line y equals 2. So that's what we get for a horizontal asymptote. Same type of problem, this one's a little bit more complicated, but again, this, the first step here is to look for the highest power of x in the bottom of the fraction and divide top and bottom by that highest power of x. So we have 3x squared minus 4x plus 2, all divided by 8x cubed minus 10, and we're going to divide top and bottom by x cubed. When we do that, on the top, we get 3x squared divided by x cubed minus 4x divided by x cubed plus 2 divided by x cubed, and on the bottom we have 8x cubed divided by x cubed, minus 10 divided by x cubed. And now we simplify as many of those as we can. What we end up with is 3 over x, minus 4 over x squared, plus 2 over x cubed. And on the bottom we get 8, minus 10 over x cubed. And now as x goes to infinity, this is going to go to 0, this is going to go to 0, this is going to go to 0, and this is going to go to 0. And so as x goes to infinity, plus or minus infinity, we get 0 minus 0 plus 0, all divided by 8 minus 0. That's 0 over 8, which is 0. And that means that our horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. Same idea, same process. In this case, the highest power of x on the bottom is x squared, so we divide top and bottom by x squared. When we do that, what we end up with is 6 minus, plus, sorry, 7 over x squared divided by 2 minus 1 over x plus 4 over x squared. I'm skipping some of the steps now, but this is going to work out similarly to the last couple examples we did. When x goes to infinity, so as x goes to plus or minus infinity, this is going to look like 6 plus 0 divided by 2 minus 0 plus 0, which is 6 over 2, which is 3. And that means that our horizontal asymptote is y equals 3. Again, same process here. We see the highest power of x in the bottom is x squared. So we're going to divide top and bottom by x squared. But something a little different is going to happen this time. On the top, we get 2x minus 8 plus 1 over x minus 3 over x squared. And on the bottom, we get 1 plus 17 over x squared. Now, 
as x goes to plus or minus infinity, this is going to go to 0. 3 over x squared is going to go to 0. 17 over x squared is going to go to 0. But x is going to go to infinity. So you, if you look at this 2x here, and you think, well, x goes to infinity, so 2x goes to infinity. And that's true. The end behavior is that as x goes to plus or minus infinity, this function is going to go to plus or minus infinity. But we can be more specific about that. Because of this 2x here, we can say that this function is going to be getting closer and closer to a line with slope 2. We call that line an oblique asymptote. And so if we were to graph this function, we would see that as x goes to plus or minus infinity, the graph of the function looks very much like a line that has slope 2. All right, one last example. The highest power of x on the bottom is x squared, so we're going to take top and bottom and divide them by x squared. When we do that and simplify, on the top we get 6x cubed minus 9x plus 1 over x squared divided by 3 plus 2 divided by x squared. And now anything with an x in the bottom is going to go to 0, and so this is going to be approximately equal to as x goes to plus or minus infinity, my function is going to be approximately equal to 6x cubed minus 9x divided by 3. And that's not a line, and so that means that we don't have any asymptotes. So in this case, we have no horizontal or oblique asymptotes. And again, if we looked at the powers on the top and the bottom, the highest power on the top is 5, the highest power on the bottom is 2, and so since it's more than one higher on the top than it is on the bottom, that's how we know we don't have any horizontal or oblique asymptotes.